Hi, this is Jill coming to you from the Farmstead Kitchen. I had a lot of questions about the broth that I was making um, oh, earlier this week that I had my beef bones in and I've added chicken bones twice now this week. It's been cooking all along because I keep thinking I'm going to make a video for you and life gets busy. So it's gone now for, let's see, I put the beef bones in Monday night, so, and it's now Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. This is its, well, four days and a night. Um, I'm going to try and show you what it looks like here in the pot now. Yeah, bear with me a little bit here. Nope, my lighting's not too great. You can see a little bit. Um, because I added some uh, fresh bones, there's some, if you notice some stuff that looked kind of like Oh, I don't want to call it scum, but that's kind of what it looks like. It's floating stuff on the top. I'm going to skim that off a minute before I strain it. Just because if that incorporates into my broth, it's not very tasty. Um, a few questions I got were, uh, one person said they kind of stole out of it, like I told you Mark had done, as it's cooking. Uh, which is fine to do. Uh, the person said it didn't taste like much and probably that's because they'd only had it on for 12 hours. So it hadn't, it just hadn't flavored the water a whole lot to be broth yet. There you can see some of that. It's just kind of floating stuff. It's just stuff that's come up out of the skin, but we don't want that to incorporate in. Um, so it's important to let it go long enough. Uh, beef bones, actually to go this long is fine for them. Uh, the chicken bones, it's fine for them too. Uh, we'll see what they look like when we get all done here. Um, so length of time is important. And then remember if you do dip out of it to replace that amount of water. With this one, the water kept evaporating out and I added water about every day or twice a day maybe. Um, the other thing that will affect the flavor is if you get a lot of that uh, in your broth, it won't taste good. So, real quickly, when I go to take it, when it's done, or I'm done cooking it, and I'm going to take it off, I run it through a cloth. This is a cheese cloth. Um, I also have, this is a linen tablecloth that I use sometimes. Um, it's a little heavier, so it doesn't strain through quite as easily. Just here. All right, but I don't want any of the the bone or the any other parts going into my broth. I want just pure liquid. So I also want to know. I have a stainless steel strainer. I've used other ones, but you really don't want to use aluminum. It breaks down, and it can, with the heat, put things into your broth that you don't want. Hot gym. Mm -hmm. Okay, so make sure I'm not. Nope, we're still good. I usually do it in the sink in case I overflow my bottom container. It happens, and it's a mess. Okay. Can you grab a plate out of there for me? So it's straining down. I'm going to help it out a little bit and just. A little gravity on it. Whoops. Oh, there we go. Like I said, it happens sometimes. Ouch. That's hot. Okay. And there's my broth. Nice and clear. It's got a little fat on top, but it is looking good. Chicken, that it's a browner one because I used roasted chicken bones in it and because it has the beef bones. Those will always be browner. The chicken is usually a really pale tan, kind of yellowish. And here I'll show you what all we had in there. And we'll look at these bones a little bit. There's my beef bones. You can see there's nothing in the middle of that. It's all gone. It looks kind of webby. 
on the inside of it there. Yeah, it's really hot. It's hard to give you a close-up of it. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the camera. Limitations of my technology here. Um, you can see these chicken bones. Like, here's this leg bone. Ooh, look at that. It tonked. It fell right apart when I tonked on it. Um, that's beautiful. That is exactly. But it's not crumbly, but it is fragile. We got all the stuff out of it. That is beautiful. The dog